Hello and welcome. You're watching FII. I am Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor. Now, sitting is the new smoking. You've heard about that. Sitting is a silent killer. You've heard that as well. Are you sitting your way straight to the grave? Well, that has been said quite often. But have you heard, you know, all of this and also wondered, but what's the way out then? If I can't exercise, my work hours are long, what is the way out? Well, we as a generation, remember, have become more sedentary in our lifestyle as well. Do, uh, you know, exercise, you know, we try to tr strike a balance, but often that sense of balance is missed. So, do this exercise with me for a couple of minutes now. Think about your posture and what you are generally doing, sitting or standing, for most part of your day. Maximum time that you spend as well. So, one can easily say the maximum time goes at work, especially if you are here in India. In office or in your own office, we are really mostly sitting. In your car, you are sitting. While you are having your food, you are sitting. And I could go on and on like this. Now, add to this the pandemic. Where, if you're, you've been intelligent enough, you're not stepping out unless absolutely necessary. And thus, we're always restrained at home as well. So, on FII today, we've got a rather ingenious solution for you. It's a huge trend that has emerged in this pandemic season. And that is a standing desk. And I'm not just talking about it. I've actually lived through it for quite some time now. Even this program is brought to you while I stand and bring you all the details. So let's dive into our explainer now where we tell you all you need to know about standing and working. Let's first talk about uh, the problem itself. What is it that we are trying to solve here and where did the deed actually arise from in the first place? Now you see sitting for long hours leads to weakening and wasting away a large leg muscle. Hips and back won't support you well enough, basically they get weak. Sitting causes hip flexor muscles to shorten and can lead to problems in the hip joints as well. There are reports now which talk about cancer emerging studies suggesting prolonged sitting may increase chances of developing some types of cancer. Increased risk of heart disease as well is being talked about. Increased insulin resistance in the body as well, basically leading to diabetes if you sit for too long. Increased risk of uh, varicose veins, which are basically means there are faulty valves within your veins that allow blood to pool as well. That can misfunction if you're sitting for too long. And basically, sitting for long hours can cause stiff neck, shoulders, we've all had it. And while all this is being talked about, mind it, this is not just some takeaways that people have talked about. This is well-established data that has come in in the government of Victoria, Australia, in the Mayo Clinic UK as well, where they have documented all of this. So, well, that's the problem really and one that has been much talked about. What is the solution? Well, it is quite simple that we are talking about, quite ingenious as many say as well. It is simply standing desks. If you are new to them, let's tell you what they are really. Well, a standing desk, also known as a stand-up desk, is basically standing and working for the entire time that you dedicated to your work. This is a desk that allows you to stand up comfortably while working as well, sit down as well and give you that flexibility. Your height adjustable desk, etc. are also now in vogue and the height can be adjusted so that you take breaks from work, sit up when required or feeling tired and stand up when wanting to shake yourself up as well. But standing is not as easy as it sounds. Trust me, I've been standing and working for over six months now. And if not done properly, can leave you with more aches than help. So we have for you a standing desk guide. Follow these instructions and you should not be going wrong. The first thing if you see in that image very clearly is that the monitor should be at arm's length away. That is the first thing that you start by. That gives you the point of your standing versus the computer. Second thing then to note is that the top of the computer, the monitor that you work on, should be at your eye level. You're not looking up, not looking down, but it should be exactly at your eye level. Your upper arms then should be close to your body. You shouldn't be going on or trying to reach on to the computer or your mouse pad or your keypad. It should all be just right there as you stand and available to you over there. And then the all important thing, your head, neck, torso and your legs. You have to be mindful of the fact that they are all in one line. 
But how will standing and working actually help? What are the benefits here? Well, the FII team went through dozens of research papers to bring you this analysis. Now, a lot of papers have talked about how humans are built to stand upright. The heart, the, uh, the cardiovascular system also works more effectively that way. Your bowel functions are more effective when one is upright and a better posture, better spine as well has been seen in people who stand and work. Your weight movement helps your digestion as well, of digestion of your fats, your sugars as well, reduce risk of obesity and lowers long-term mortality, believe it or not, as many research papers have said. It also leads to increased energy levels and better mood. Well, I can vouch for that. And also, standing while working boosts productivity. Well, all this is what research papers have actually talked about it. But as I tell you all the benefits, do remember, when we talk about a standing desk, there are some riders also. To start with, standing and working does not mean that you're standing indefinitely. Or if you have like an eight-hour eight work schedule, you are committed to standing all and throughout those eight hours. That is not to be done. Lower back and leg pain can happen if you're endlessly standing and working. Cardiovascular problems can actually happen. It can lead to fatigue, discomfort, muscle pain, leg swelling, sore feet. So if you're experiencing this, that means you're not doing it, right? So please take a pause from it. Consult your physiotherapist, talk to your doctor and do some proper research before you actually get on board with that as well. So ultimately, the point is that you have to strike a balance somewhere, right? You have to strike a balance between not just sitting all the time, not just standing all the time, but taking a break when your legs feel tired and also then coming back up and trying to get into the right posture again. All right, having understood that, let's take uh, this discussion to our panelists, try and understand from them what works, what does not work when it comes to standing desks. We have with us uh, Dr. Vikram back with us on FII. Always great to have you. Uh, we have with us Luke Tino. Uh, Luke has been talking about various fitness uh, tips online, telling people quick ways in which we can work and we'll get to see his inputs on standing desks as well. We have with us uh, Rohit Mehta, he is a physiotherapist at Max Hospital and we also have with us Jeanal Shah, uh, she's a senior nutritionist and works with Rujita uh, Akar as well. Let me start with Dr. Vikram. Dr. Vikram, we talked about this earlier as well. Uh, that there have been, we've seen a huge shift in the way uh, people work, people live now because of the pandemic. And you were telling me earlier that during the course of the pandemic and mostly work from home, you've heard so many cases and more patients actually coming to you with uh, back problems, with issues. Some thought it's COVID, it's long COVID impact, but a lot of people who never actually got it are doing are not realizing, but this could actually be happening because of a bad posture. Yep. Uh, thanks, Sonal. So this pandemic seems to have brought to the forefront a number of issues which we otherwise ignored. Mm -hmm. And the biggest culprit has been a rather sedentary lifestyle mm -hmm. and sitting for very long hours. And it's not only sitting, but sitting inappropriately for prolonged periods is what leads to this. And a lot of offices and companies have actually encouraged their employees to have uh, a work from home environment and culture. And what this has basically done is it's made us a little lax. We don't focus as much as to the way we sit, where we sit, the way the laptop is in front of us. So it's extremely important that we focus on these things to make sure that we don't land up with these myriad of issues that you discussed. Hmm. And the important thing when you sit is that your butt and your back need to be well supported when you sit on a computer and anything in excess is not good so right. sitting standing mm. anything is in excess is not good so mm. it's important to continuously change and that has been the norm of environment that's been the norm of the world so the more you keep changing your posture throughout the day the more circulation the more muscles in your body that are exercised and mm. you're free from all these problems and right. the most important thing is the moment you keep moving your body, your muscles get pumped, they get exercised, you feel better. Uh, it increases your concentration while you're working. Hmm. And, uh, you know, the zeal to get back to work the next day, though you're working from home, stays with you. 
All right, let me go to Dr. Rohit next. Dr. Rohit, it's very important to have a good posture. I think that's the bottom line here, standing or sitting while working. And a lot of focus has come to that as well. Now, all these corporate offices have these huge budgets that they've given to their employees to, and they spend a lot on these days getting a comfortable chair, getting a good chair, but not a very expensive chair is a, a good one, is the one good for your spine, is that correct? And I've often heard that there is a formula, right, to this, a 20-20-20 formula where every 20 minutes to half an hour, it is advisable that you change your posture and position a little. Yes, absolutely, absolutely right. Uh, thank you, Sonal, for this question. Actually, these days, uh, uh, there is a lot of a lot of patients coming up in early 20s or early 30s who are suffering from a lot of neck pain and back pain, hmm. which is because of uh, everyone is now working at home. And uh, the posture was not right. There was not proper sitting chair. There was not proper desktop level, which is shown in your picture, which was absolutely right picture. Uh, the desktop level should be on the eye, eye, uh, eyesight level, and your uh, your elbow should be on 90 degree position, uh, which is uh, which is causing a lot of patients to neck pain and cervical pain. Hmm. And uh, 2020 uh, 2020 formula is very good actually. Uh, we are suggesting patient after every 20 minutes, after every 30 minutes, take a walk, do some stretching exercises, try to try to mobilize your uh, spinal muscles, try to stretch your uh, muscles, which will help definitely help to reduce pain. Hmm. And uh, uh, a lot of patient, lot of young patients actually coming up with our early degenerative changes, right. which is which is uh, which is very questionable. Actually, our health is our priority and we all are working a lot yeah. from computer and, and laptop. And if I can add to that, it's not just working on it, it's also working on your phone. I think the posture has become, if the camera can catch it, it's become like this. So your shoulders Absolutely. are down, your, you know, it's not back, it's not upright and back how it should be. And that also needs to take a precedence. So this 20-20 formula is actually every 20 minutes you take a break, you look at something which is 20 meters away from you and you do this uh, for a period of time to actually get you going. But enough about me getting so excited about this. Let me go to Luke now. Luke, your thoughts on uh, just trying to get it right and trying to bring our focus and conscious back to striking a balance? Yeah, I think yes, that balance is, is right very important. Well, balance. Balance. That question is for Luke, actually. Dr. Vaital, come back to Sorry, I heard wrong. <laughs> no worries, Dr. Yeah, I think the right word that you men mentioned, Sonal, is balance. You know, because a standing desk is great. It's getting you out of your chair and you're not sitting anymore. Hmm. But the magic is in movement. Movement hmm. is medicine. You could also be standing, and we have a lot of patients who stand for a very long time. And especially if you have a varicose vein problem, that can actually make it worse for you. Hmm. So the idea is how do we encourage movement? You know, like you said, the 20, 20, 20. And I really think even if someone has a sitting job for eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours, even if you get up for two or three minutes in between, okay, you walk around, you can't walk around, at least stretch, touch your toes, open up, blood circulation. You see, the heart works on a circulatory function, you know, and it, it works without movement. It works while we sleep. But the lymphatic system, which controls everything from your immune system to inflammation is only activated when we move. So the more we move, the more lymphatic system activation. Hmm. So I think movement is key. And even small, small intervals of walking is absolutely essential for the human body. Both, hmm. both doctors mentioned posture, which is so important. Because hmm. if you sit with a wrong posture, you stand with a wrong posture, you're actually doing more harm. So I think the word is balance. And people should be mindful that if I'm sitting for a long time, I must get up. Get up, go to the toilet, get a cup of water, brew yourself a cup of tea or whatever it is. But move around, touch your toes, sit down again. So I think the balance is extremely important for us to right. achieve. And it's not just about, you know, burning and doing very hard eating cardio. It's these little things that you can incorporate in your lifestyle that do wonders, really. I know Jeanal is also waiting, but I have to slip into a break. On the other side, I'll come to her and we'll talk about not just a standing desk, but now there's a treadmill desk also. What's that about? That's coming up on the other side. Welcome back. We're discussing standing and working standing desks on the show today. Let's uh, go to Jinal Shah now. Uh, Jinal, your thoughts on how one can easily incorporate this in their life. I know the reaction I get from a lot of people is that, you know, this is so crazy. How can you be standing for so many hours? But one needs to understand it's not endlessly standing. It's standing up when required, sitting when you take a break and not the opposite. 
Yeah, no, firstly, Sonal, hats off to you yeah, for standing for the last six months and doing your job. I think that's mind-blowing. So firstly, hats off to you. But this is what we have been telling our clients for a very long period of time now that what you need to do is you, we do a ratio of like 30 minutes of sitting and for every 30 minutes that you sit, you stand or walk for three minutes. I think that kind of makes it easier to mm. break that mm. sitting because we all know that Sitting is the new smoking. It is an independent risk factor to uh, lifestyle diseases, heart disease, diabetes, you know, many of these things that happen. In fact, Rujuta, all through the, uh, you know, lockdown also, because sitting just suddenly increased so much with work from home, she has been constantly posting a whole lot of videos about what all to do while you're sitting also, hmm. where you're stretching, you know, your entire body, ensuring that you're, like you said at the beginning, you know, your neck, your shoulders, your hmm. chest is constantly open. So how that works. So one is 30 is to three. You remember that. The other thing that you do is create more opportunities for the body to move. You know, with us, what typically happens is that as we grow, you know, in age, we kind of just move lesser. And, you know, if we have a bell baji, then we are typically looking around, ki who's the youngest one who's going to run and get up? Or we'll tell, Chalya, tu khole hmm. you know, we never want to move. Hmm. So that's what we need to start doing. We need to move more, park our cars a little further away, walk that little extra mile. Otherwise, we are just constantly creating traffic on the road. We want to mm. park right outside the shop. So mm. we need to do these things because sitting, it decreases your mobility, decreases your strength, which only makes you age faster. Nobody wants to age. We all want to look young all the time. So I think that's what we need to do, well, break that sitting. It makes you age faster and standing might uh, help you lose a few extra calories. For those who get very excited about these, these are just statistics I'm putting out <laughs> there. Uh, Luke, I just I have last few minutes and I wanted to come back to you on this entire uh, thing. You know, we keep talking about this and a lot of people, even after being aware, find it very hard to sort of incorporate this in their life. Do you have some tips on how we can actually make it happen? You're on mute. Yeah, we can make it happen by doing it. That's just a simple way. I can give you five sugar-coated answers of motivational tips, but the actual way of doing it is by doing it. And by creating awareness, I think Jinal had some great points. Everyone had some great points. I think as a human being, we have to own the responsibility towards action. And if we know it's important, I think 30 minutes and three minutes for every 30 minutes you sit is brilliant. And it's doable and people have to own the responsibility to start doing it. If we need motivation to walk every three minutes after 30 minutes, then I think that's a very, very serious problem that we have in humanity right now. So I think awareness and action are the words with a little bit of discipline and consistency. Right. And it's going to be a little tough uh, to do in the beginning. I can s speak from personal experience, yeah. but you get used to it quite uh, easily in just about two weeks or so. It's not that bad to actually go forward. And if you don't want to be visiting your physiotherapist time and again and paying so much more money time and effort in that please take care of your health while you can we'll have to leave it there thank you all for joining us on this very exciting discussion that's it on fii today we'll see you again bye bye for now